G'day nerfers, welcome to Combo with a Crater. I'm your host Jim, and today we have the heartbreaker, the tag taker, the nerf sniper, Brady Lee Phillips. How are you mate? I'm alright, how are you? I'm good mate, good. How's the weather over there? Uh, well, it's only 9am in the morning and it's already up to the mid-30s, so Ooh. yeah, a bit of a swelter here today. I hope you've got that aircon going. We've got a five-day heat wave at the moment, so I have a tiny fan on, but I didn't want to affect the mic too much, so I'm gonna just, just <laughs> going to tolerate it for the video. <laughs> for those who don't know, um, Brad is a YouTuber whose channel uh, covers reviews, mods, gameplay footage, but Brad is best known as one of, if not the best, nerf sniper in the hobby. Um, do you see yourself as a specially gifted player? I'll just say I'm a... I'm a normal player who has a really accurate blaster. Like, I've always um, been drawn to the most accurate blasters in Nerf. And that's probably because I came from, like, a real steel background where, like, what I aim at, it's supposed to get hit. So I never fell into the trap of flywheel blasters and sending 100 darts at people hoping to get them once. Yep. So just put a sight on a springer, point it at the opponent and pull the trigger that's pretty much the basis to what I do. Yep. But how you do it, it just looks amazing. I remember watching a video a few weeks ago uh, where you were playing at the Gelsoft field and it was a massive crosswind and you tagged a guy from like 60 metres away. Oh, yeah. So into the one the crosswind. Where, where I took the um, the first shot and I went slightly right of him. Yep. And so yep. I just like, by uh, estimate, adjusted bang on second shot. It was beautiful to watch. I think I, I've watched it a couple of times just to see that dart <laughs> just hit that guy. It was absolutely beautiful. He didn't know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can, I'm not surprised. But that field is really, really good where you play it now. Um, Battle for Waterloo or Waterloo. Yeah, yep, yep. that's the one. So they, you, I think one of your videos, they've recently allowed to play gel ball there as well now? Yeah, so that field within the last month, has become licensed for hosting gel ball events. Okay, so they have okay. a they have about 50 higher blasters and like unfortunately most people don't have their firearms license so they're just hiring blasters at the moment. Yeah, okay. Well, speaking about gel, um what's going on with gel blasters in South Australia at the moment? Well, gel blasters were I I guess in their third year of mass popularity here in South Australia. Events were getting like 80 people per day at them every nice. weekend. Nice. Um, and suddenly overnight, South Australia police decided that the mechanism they used to fire is too similar to airsoft and decided to class them as a firearm. Wow. And so to own them now, you need to have a Category A um, Section 4 for paintball firearms license and store them in a safe. And I bet that's not easy to do for the average gel baller. No, um, so that that costs a hundred bucks to apply for, and plus you have to get the safe and renew the license every year. So it's just a, a bit of a cash grab, really. So if if you could sit down with the South Australian Police Commissioner, what would you say to them to say, let's work this out together? What would be a fair point of view from South Pole and the the GBB is? What would you say to come to some middle ground for so everyone gets a chance to? Be well, fair and safe. I'd say that what Queensland have just implemented over there, um, they've made some changes themselves, and that seems very fair to me. So they've made them a, um, I'm not sure what the term is, but if you take it out in public, it's an offence. But if you have a reasonable excuse for having it, so if you're transporting it to an event, yep. it's not considered like illegal or anything. So there's no license needed. Um, it's just like a, a regulated, in, like like having a knife or something. You can't take a knife out in public, but you can own one. Yep. So they've done something like that. Do you think Do you think South Australia Police will ever do something like that, or they're just going to be hardball and say, mm. this is what it is? Well, there's an ongoing court case. I believe they resume that on the 17th or so, maybe 16th. I can't remember the exact date. But depending on the outcome of that, it could drastically affect what they choose to do. Okay. 
So I've seen on your channel uh, a couple of months ago that there was a lot of protests and petitions going on about this new ruling. Do you think the protests are helping or hindering the cause of GBB is? I think it's bringing attention to it and it's also keeping the the players who uh, had nowhere to go and play, keeping them in, co in communication with each other. It's kind of like a social meeting for them um, where they used to meet every weekend. We held the protests every week or so. Um, but yeah, now they've switched to more of a handing out flyers kind of thing. And they've ha they've uh, got an event coming up at like the, the main market stall area in Adelaide called Rundle Mall. And they're just, just going to be standing there handing out flyers. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. So it seems like uh, you've got this case where you had a lot of people that had blasters, gel blasters, and now they can't use them anymore. So yep. what, 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 what can they do with them? Well, they have to, by the end of March, either dispose of them oh, wow. or get a license. Wow, so it's pretty uh, pretty black and white in that instance. Okay, mm. So I imagine a lot of people are getting out of the hobby because of this ruling. Um, I think people are still hanging on to the result of the court case. Yep. Honestly, I don't see the court case being over by March. So the first thing I did was I went and changed my license from just pure firearms to adding paintball. So now I can continue playing and doing reviews and all that. In fact, I've got some, I got a gas blowback pistol coming. So oh, nice. that'll be cool to review. Nice. Keep an eye for Brad's channel on that one. Yeah. Um, so what made gel so popular over Nerf? Because Nerf has been around for a long, long time, but it never seemed to have the numbers that gel has in Australia anyway. I'd have to say it's, well, it would be a combination of things. First, when gel blasters first took off, the media kind of did smear campaigns on them. But I think that had the opposite effect. People started learning about them, what they can do, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'd love to spend my weekends doing that. So they saw a boom in popularity from that. Also, the appearance of them being based on real steel, because we don't have airsoft here, all of the Call of Duty players and all the first-person shooter players come out and they're like, oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I use this gun in my game, but now I can do a bit of fitness while I play with it. So yep. there's kind of a that kind of factor as well. It's also like not, you mentioned fitness, which is great for anybody to have, but also brings them into a community of like-minded people. Yeah, exactly. It allows them to hang out, have fun, build up a network. And that, to me, that's an important, especially for people's mental health and physical health. Yeah, and also until like I started showing the comparisons where I'm playing against gel blasters with Nerf, a lot of them kind of had the stigma that Nerf is for kids; they don't shoot very hard and that kind of mm. stuff. And so, you proved them wrong with your 300 FPS caliber. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But like until people can get over the fact that they look like a kid's toy, um, generally people will think gel blasters shoot harder and, and all that. So yeah. they'll gravitate towards those. Do you think like just imagine a world where gel balls uh, are completely fine? Uh, let's say Queensland, for example. Can you see a place where you can have clubs that would have both uh, both positions for gels and nerf in the same club so you could potentially see gels and nerf against each other on a weekly match well we're already doing that here the thing with gel ball is it's nowhere near as accurate as a spring nerf bluster so we've been using this the nerf blasters high-powered ones as snipers um, where there doesn't exist a sniper in the gel ball realm Yep. So do you think that's going to encourage players to go for both options? Like I know you mentioned in one of your recent videos that you would have a um, gel ball cider and you would have a springer, nerf springer or dart springer as your primary. Do you see more yeah. people doing that type of thing? I reckon. Like I, I've already heard a few of the gel ballers say, oh, I want one of those now when they <laughs> saw my saber or my caliban. Yep. Um, but for a sidearm, the the sheer capacity of mm -hmm. shots that you can have in that and the fact they're semi-auto or even full auto um, in such a compact size, 
that's definitely much a much better sidearm choice than like a FDL or or like a the worker little pistol thing. Yeah, the hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. what eight shots or something. A six. I, I think. think. In my gas blowback pistol, I'm getting that's like twenty shots or maybe eighteen or so. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you prefer when it comes to our hobby, like a nerfing hobby? Do you what do you think of the term nerfing? Should it still be nerfing, or do you think we should steer towards more dart soft uh, as a colloquial term for our hobby? I think it depends what you're doing in the hobby. If you're still playing HVZs and stuff in public, I wouldn't really call that dart soft. I reckon I'd just call that nerf. Yeah. If you're playing on private fields with gel ball or uh, like an airsoft field or paintball field, I reckon that's where you start wanting to call it something else because um, we already call gel ball gel soft. And playing alongside of them at high velocities, it makes sense to call that dart soft. Yeah. Well, it makes sense to me. Uh, but it really depends on how the community embraces those type of that terminology. And especially over here where um, high-powered nerf and gel ball are filling in for a lack of airsoft because it's banned here, it's filling the role of airsoft. So yep. call it dart soft and gel soft. It makes sense. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense for everyone in every location. Yeah, what I say. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. Like with HVC, is it is still basically just above. It's like super stock, basically. Yeah. There's no reason to go into that dart soft capacity. Yeah. Um, do you find that due to your celebrity status as you know such a big YouTuber over in here in Australia? that when you go to matches like, say, Battle of Waterloo, do you get swamped by people who recognise you and want to remember your time or do people just say good day and let you be? <laughs> um, I'd say I'm mostly just treated like a normal person, really. I am not, don't have a million subscribers. Not <laughs> but, yet, anyway. But out on the field, though, if I'm recording a video, and this goes for pretty much anyone who's recording a video ever, if someone sees you with a GoPro on your head, they're going to probably say, hey, look, that guy's there is recording a video let's get him so it does make it a bit harder i reckon when um i've had nerf events before where people are like oh brad's over there and they get their whole team over <laughs> and you get you get wiped out from about 20 guys mm. or you wipe them all out oh, that's another option <laughs> <laughs> so speaking about all the games you go to you do you do any special training you like training at home and you're in the garage or whatever just to try and get you to do any tactical drills like drawing your sidearm mag changes do you do things like that to help you keep you on top of your game um honestly it probably should but i don't <laughs> <laughs> um i could get my reload speeds up faster than they are now obviously if you've seen my videos i generally take like a few seconds to change the mags whereas like if i practiced i could get under a second or so but in the grand scheme of things it doesn't change the outcome of my games much um i i guess learning on the field is just as good a teacher as in your backyard yep. um at least from my my perspective pers perspective well that's awesome um so you're also thinking about you're doing more reviews at the moment but obviously you can't do any gel ball reviews too soon unless you go to the field have you got anything else uh lined up at the moment like nerf wise or dart soft wise uh that you're thinking about reviewing soon or interested in getting that's on the market um so at an event next weekend if if this person's able to make it he has a 3d printed lynx and oh nice i haven't seen one before so um i was going to take it take a few moments aside and do a review of his blaster um as well as, oh, I've got two of the new worker kits for the Nexus Pro. Oh, nice. So yep. that's another one that I'll have a look at doing in the near future. Yep, yep. Um, so you didn't grab the the Faro uh, worker kit then, I take it? Uh, I don't own a Faro. <laughs> Is that a rival blaster? Uh, <laughs> that's the amazing Ultraline. Uh, oh, Ultra, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even worse. So. Yeah, <laughs> Mate, that's about all the questions I have for you today. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to to leave on? Um, probably, I don't have anything prepared, so 
if you had any other questions, feel free to ask. Um, but yeah, mostly if you have any other questions that you didn't see answered in this video, like ask me a question in the comments on my channel. I'm happy to answer anything that people post. Excellent, excellent. Well, your channel is an amazing look at the hobby from an Australian perspective, and you're pretty close to hitting that 10,000 K subscribers. So if anyone out there is not subscribed to your channel, I highly recommend you do so. And that's it for me. Thanks very much for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you later. See you guys. Bye.